Hey, Better Editors, what is up? My name is Chris, and today we are starting part four of our 10-part series in learning Adobe Premiere Pro. Today, we are gonna pull some selects and start to craft our coffee shop edit. Let's do it. Okay, let's dig into this footage and start making something. To do that quickly, we need to get it organized and start pulling some selects out of it. So to start, let's run up to our footage bin and double click on it. That's gonna open up a new window where we can expand this and do some work. Now you'll notice that this is an exact duplicate of what's in the project panel. That's good. The thing is, aside from seeing the descriptive names, we don't get much information here. We can click on the icon view and at least see what's going on in these clips and we can even hover our mouse over the top of the clips and see what's happening in them. But what we can't do is manipulate them or move them in any sort of a way. So what I can do though is click on the freeform view, which gives us a new layout. This is almost like a blank canvas. These clips are currently organized in alphabetical order, but because of the freeform view, we can move these clips in any order that we want them to be in. And I know that this coffee shop edit is gonna have a certain flow to it. So if I already know that flow, I can rough that out inside of this freeform bin. So let's grab all of our bean shots and move them next to each other. Okay, and from there, it's gonna go to everything being ground up. Okay, that's good. And then from there, we're gonna start brewing. And maybe we're gonna have some steamed milk. And then finally, we're gonna get our hero shots there at the end with the barista making this look excellent. So this is kind of a rough layout of how this video is gonna play. Obviously the shots can move around. We can you know, pick and choose some more things once we get into the edit, but roughly this is what it's gonna look like. Okay, now let's get these into a working sequence. So I'm gonna hit Control N or Command N. And in there, I'm gonna select the ProRes 1920 by 1080 sequence, and then I'm gonna call it plus working. And the plus is just so that it is sorted at the top of that bin. Makes it easier to find. So I'm gonna start by pulling all of this into our sequence. Okay, now I wanna zoom into this timeline so I get a little bit more detail of what's going on here. To do that, I can either grab this handle down here and push it and zoom in, or for something that's slightly faster, if my timeline selected, and you'll see that by the window having the blue highlight around it, I can hit Shift Z. And if I do that, it zooms in. And if I wanna go backwards, I can hit Shift Z and go out. Very nice. Let's scrub through these clips and we're gonna find the key moments in the clips that we like. If there's any movement, things that we enjoy, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I really like where this arm starts to enter the frame. That shadow up there looks really nice. So I'm gonna start it right there. And I'm just gonna hit G on the panel. Notice that my clip is already selected down here. And that's because under sequence, I have selection follows playhead turned on. And what that does is as I move the playhead, it selects the next targeted clip in the timeline. And by targeted, I mean it's looking at these toggles. So if I don't have anything selected, it'll still do it. If I have A2 selected, it's not selecting anything. So let's just turn that back to V1, that's perfect. Okay, and then we can delete this. So we'll do that, run along, it runs through. The end of the clip is good. All right, this next clip, the whole thing looks really good to me, honestly, I like that. Okay, this is a perfect example of something we don't want. So we jump into the clip and it starts right into that kind of awkward moment of all this action up here. Let's go and see how everything plays out. We'll zoom out a little bit by hitting the minus key up at the top right of the keyboard. And look at that, this is still pretty nice. We got some good movement with the beans. It's a really cool clip. I really like that right there with the arm coming through. So I'm gonna mark right there, remove that. And I might even take two passes or three passes. Yeah, that looks nice. Just so we have something to work with and we'll remove that. Our next clip is very similar to one we already had, but it almost seems out of focus. And it's a little shaky. I don't, I don't know if I'm a huge fan of this clip. I'm just gonna remove the whole thing, to be honest with you. Let's keep going. Okay, here's another shot. Now this is very similar. If you hit the H tool, you can grab the hand and move your timeline. It's very similar to this shot, but I really like this shot a lot more because of the movement of the camera. So I'm gonna get rid of this as well. Okay, now this shot is really cool. I don't know why, but I just find that shot very fascinating. Um, the whole thing is basically the same, so I'm just gonna leave this clip in the timeline. What do we have here? So this is just a shot. Hmm, not much going on, but that little camera move right there, it might not have even been on purpose, is kinda nice. So I'm gonna leave this. What do we have here? Okay, here's a good shot of everything being ground. 
Again, I'm not sure where we'll use this. Most likely will come in when we're pushing the lever there, or if you notice when this has a slight rack focus, that's real nice. Here's another shot. Again, don't know where we'll use it. Most likely where we get a little bit of a rack focus there, that's nice. We'll just keep the whole thing. And this is a little interesting. So we start off with this inside the press and then pulling out and it's kind of awkward and slow. I honestly think it would look better if we were going in reverse and it looked like we were pushing this. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and tell this clip to play backwards. To do that, I'm going to right click and hit speed duration and say reverse speed. Now if I play this forward, it's actually moving in reverse and that looks much better. See, we don't have to let anybody know it's already been pressed. We can start right about there get rid of the head of the clip, and it looks like a press. And then we'll cut it right there. Okay. We keep going. Oh, we've got a good coffee pour right there. That's nice. I really like the coffee coming off the tips of those things. That's just a really cool look up in the top right. So we'll leave that the way it is. Now, I'm not a huge fan of how much the camera moves. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim that down. That's another good shot, similar thing. Okay, we can pull that out. Same thing here. But what I like about this clip is it actually starts moving right there and following the coffee and the smoke. Oh, that camera move is just really nice and that is what I wanna use in the edit. So I'm gonna cut it right there, get rid of the head of the clip, and then we'll have the rest of this that we can use later. Okay, up next is this one. Honestly, because this starts mid-pour and there's not a lot going on, I'm also not a huge fan of the glass coffee mug. Um, I'm just going to get rid of this. Let's keep going. Okay, now we got some steamed milk action. And again, not too much going on in this clip, so I'm just going to leave the whole thing because I think we need it. Same thing here. I'm a big fan of the movement of this. I don't really like the hand in the top left, and there's a lot of ways we could get rid of that, but the easiest would be to just wait until it's out of frame and cut that. That's a good little camera move that it has there. That's real nice, actually. I'm going to take that, so let's come here, and we'll start about where the move starts. Yeah, that's really nice right there. Okay. There's not much to give us here. We don't really have anything to work with, so I'm just gonna lose this clip. And the way I'm removing clips is just selecting them and hitting the delete button. Okay, this is a good pour. I like this pour. Well, isn't that nice? Well, we'll hold on to that whole thing. And this is just a really cool shot. I don't know if it works in this particular video though. One, because of the glass itself, but two, because it's not really a pour. It's a really neat shot, but I don't think it works for what we're trying to make. So I'm gonna go ahead and lose this shot as well. And there we go. Okay, one more good coffee pour from the barista. This one's a little shaky, but I do, like how much effort's in there. I also like just the colors of the frame, especially compared to this one. This one's really bright. This one just feels a little more cinematic to me. All right, now let's pull out and see what we're working with. Notice that our timeline is a little over four minutes and 30 seconds. So first thing I'm gonna do is turn off my selection, my selection follows playhead. So that's off. So now if I scrub over this, I'm not accidentally selecting anything. And let's zoom out. So if I zoom out, you'll notice we have a bunch of gaps now. And to remove those gaps, you can go to Sequence, Close Gap. We hit Home, and we go to the head of the timeline, and look, our four and a half minute long sequence is now just under three minutes. That might not seem like a lot, but that makes it a lot easier for us to just quickly scrub through this material and see what's in here. And with that, we are in good shape. So we've organized our footage, and we've picked through and found our favorite shots. Coming up in the next part, we're going to find a music track and cut it down to the appropriate length for this promo. We'll see you then.